In this lesson for Bobcad Cam, we're going to cover the milling portion of the software. As you can see, we have a part on the screen. What we're going to do on this part is we're going to rough down the cone area to the flat. We're going to finish the cone in the flat, pocket the slots, drill some holes, chamfer all of these, and then do some engraving on the top of it. Some of your basic operations you might run through. So to start this, we're going to go up to Modules and Cam Tree, and we're going to run New Cam Job milling and choose the three axis generic machine and press OK. Now inside of here we're going to right click on milling stock and run the stock wizard. We're going to use cylindrical stock next. We're going to let it auto from workpiece which is fine. If you wanted to you can change the diameter and height here and you could also add to different areas of it here as you can see. So on the ending face if I wanted to add an extra half inch you can see I can add that area to the bottom there. Same with the starting face and the diameter itself. Our extrusion direction in this case is along the Z. You could make it along the X if needed. And once we have our stock set up we'll hit the next button. Good rule of thumb is never skip a next button. This brings us to our machine setup which is our part zero. You can see all the dots all over the part where we can place the part zero. If you have a custom position, like at the center of a hole, just make sure you have a point at the correct X, Y, and Z position to choose. We're going to choose the origin button, and I'm going to highlight and click the point at the top center. This will be my X, Y, Z center. The clearance plane is one inch. You can raise that up if needed, and I'm going to press OK. I'm going to right-click on milling stock and choose the last option, which is blank, to visually turn it off. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run a 3D operation to rough this out, finish the flat, and then finish the cone. So we're going to right click on machine setup and we're going to do a mill three axis. Then we're going to use the select geometry and for this we're going to pick the entire model. When choosing for 3D toolpaths always pick as much of the model as possible if not the whole model and then use your boundaries or your settings in your toolpath to control where it cuts. Right click and OK it. We're not going to use a boundary because we're going to cut all that area around that. So then we'll hit next. So inside of here we have our clearance plane, our rapid plane, our feed plane top of part is zero, that's where we touch our tools and the top of the material we're cutting is at the same spot. You can also use the pick top button and it'll take you into the CAD where you can actually pick an edge at the top. Now we're into the machining strategy. You have all your standard and pro tool paths in here that you can choose down here and then you can modify across back and forth. So for instance maybe I want to do an advanced rough but then I also want to bring in the Z-level finish and the flatlands. I can add all these tool paths together. I can move one up and down as I need them. I can also remove them with the red X over here. The nice thing about this is you're only picking the model once for all three or however many strategies that you put into that operation. We have some custom built strategies up here by us as well. You can see this one contains the Z level rough and fin uh, Z level rough and planer. You have Z level rough, Z level finish and planer. Your advanced rough and flatlands, and this one would be advanced rough. Advanced rough again for maybe like a rest machining, flatland, Z-level finish, and equidistant. All of these can be modified, the defaults, in the tool patterns page inside the software. So for now, for this one, I'm just going to choose the uh, strategy 3, and then I'm going to add in a Z-level finish as well. So we're going to rough it, finish the flat, and then Z-level finish down the cone with a ball end mill. Then we'll hit next. Here you have your work offset. This is like G54, fourth axis indexing. We're going to turn on arc fit. For this one, I'm going to go into my tool crib under end mill rough style and my library, and I'm going to choose the three inch face mill. OK it to bring it into the tool crib and press OK again, and it brings it into my feature. Now I'm going to assign the tool holder, which is this area here, for simulation by clicking the assign tool holder button. I'll just grab like the inch and a half for this one. Now, when you do that, this distance here becomes important. This is the distance that it hangs out of the holder. So two inches will be fine in this case. Have your tool number offsets, coolant, speeds and feeds. If this is checked, it looks at the material library. If this is unchecked, it'll allow you to type in your speeds and feeds. We're going to do a zig climb mill. You can also do your high speed adaptive roughing if needed. Step down, we're going to do at 150 a cut. We're going to step over at, let's say, 7, eh, let's do 875. A pass, we're using a 3 inch cutter. And we're also going to turn on intermediate steps to 2 for staircase removal. We're going to leave 10 thousandths all over the part. We'll leave it on cut holes, and we'll use the overall depths at first. Entry methods, you can plunge or choose different types of entry methods here. We'll just use the plunge option. You could turn on rest roughing to come back in with a 
Second uh, advanced rough to clear out the areas the larger tool couldn't fit. Since we have flats, I'm going to turn on the sheen flatland so it recognizes the flats and uses those. And we're going to do by area. We're going to do direct linking in between group, within groups and between groups. And to come back onto the flatlands now, we're going to choose the same tool. So I'm going to go to end mill rough and choose the three inch in there as well because I want it to finish that flat with that same cutter while it's in the machine. It remembers the tool. I will assign the tool holder again. Tool numbers, speeds and feeds. Zig, climb mill. Step over, we'll do, let's say 750. We're going to finish it this time. We're going to do circular lead in and out and we'll make it at least the radius of the tool. Always use tool tip because that's where you touch and zero your tools. And then follow on the links. Now we're going to go into the finish of the cone itself, which is the Z-level finish. You can see this just takes us right down the tree of all of these operations. We're going to use the default half-inch ball end mill, and we'll just pick a half-inch tool holder for this. Protrusion length is long enough. If you can't access it, just uncheck this here, and you'll be able to get into it. Tool number two, speeds and feeds, coolant, climb mill, depth of cut. I'm going to do like uh, 30 thousandths. We're going to finish it. Plunge and vertical on the entries. You have all innermost or outermost. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to do just the outermost. Otherwise, it will try and go down that top center hole. So this allows you to pick the whole model. As you can see in the picture, choose where you're cutting. We're still doing tool tip and by area. These are different step down connections. Follow, follow surface shape. You can do a horizontal vertical, spiral or retract. We'll do a follow and a retract on the large links. And we'll compute it. And this will take just a moment to calculate. Okay, and here you can see our tool path. And if I right click on each of these, I can change the color of them. Let's, let's make the roughing orange. So if you look at this one, you can see it's roughing down around the cone area. Then the flatlands will change the color to like this one here. So you can see it's just going across the flat. And then the Z level finish will change the color to uh, green. Now this one, you'll notice it went down the cone and down the wall because it's trying to finish everything on the outside. Well, the reason I wanted to show you all this at once is that if you don't set a stop, it's going to try and go down the whole thing because that's what we selected. So we can go back up to the feature, right click and edit, go down to the per, uh, parameters for the Z-level finish, turn on bottom of job and give it a minus number from your top of job zero or a position from in reference to your top of job. And then instead of recomputing here, It'll recompute all three of them. I'm just going to hit finish. Go back to the one toolpath in the tree and right click and compute just that toolpath. That way I don't have to sit through the calculation of all the other ones. So as you can see, I was faster calculation and now I'm just doing down the cone. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and right click on this feature and hit blank on blank toolpath and it just visually turns it off for me so I can work on my next part, which is going to be cutting these slots. So we're going to right click on machine setup again. We're going to do a mill two axis. The geometry we're going to pick for this is you can pick the surface. You can pick the edges at the bottom or the top, doesn't matter. So for this instance, let's just pick the two surfaces. You can pick lines and arcs off of wireframe as well. Next button, you can see it shows me what I'm cutting. Again, clearance plane, rapid plane, feed plane. Top apart has now been cut down, so I can either type in the minus 1.5 to that level or I could use the pick top button and pick an edge at the distance at the top apart is and it will load the value. Now the depth, I need to know how deep those slots are, or again I can use the pick bottom and pick an edge at that depth and load it in, so those are 750 deep. We're going to do pocketing, so you can see it gives me the standard pocket default strategy, which I can change. Maybe I want to spring pass it so I can add another finish in there. So it's going to be pocketed with a finish and then a spring pass finish. And I'm also going to add in a chamfer mill to this as well. And I'm going to move that down. So that way afterwards a chamfer mill can come in and chamfer the tops of those slots. You have your work offsets. Now for the tool for this, I'm going to go through the tool crib into the library. And I'm going to choose this uh, 7 16 end mill for this to rough them out. I'm going to assign a holder. Again, this is just for simulation purposes. And make sure your protrusion length is long enough. 
Now that has to be able to clear uh, the boss and the depth of the pocket and make sure the holder doesn't hit. So I'm going to make that a two and a half on this one's case. Tool number, speeds and feeds, coolant options, your different pocketing methods. We're going to do offset pocket out. You can also turn on advanced for open pockets and use the high speed. Step over and percentage of tool and climb mill. We're going to leave 10 thousandths on the walls for finishing. There's our depth that I'm going to step down at a quarter inch of pass. We're going to ramp entry it with the default settings. Closest on the sequencing. There's only two of them. And now for the finish tool, I'm going to go into my tool crib in my library. And we're going to pick this uh, 375N mill right here. I'm not going to assign a holder to this one just so you can see the difference. Tool 4. We're going to turn on both compensations, machine and system. We're not leaving any material for finishing because we're finishing it. We're taking it in one pass. You can step it down if you need it. And I'm going to do a circular lead in and out of maybe uh, 60 thou. Default corner types and closest on the machining sequence. Now for the next one, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up here to the tool. All right, so once I've set the tool, as I go through this, I'm doing the same operation in the pat on the next one. If I had to hit this apply to all operations, as I go through this, each page I hit this apply to all operations, you can see when I get down to this one, I'm going to pick the tool out of my tool crib. It has this, the, the setting set. So this button here, if you set a page and that page is apparent in the other ones, it will set that to the other ones as well. And closest on the machining sequence. Now we're down to the chamfer mill. And for this one, we're just going to use the default tool. We use both comps. And for this one, we're just going to pick a depth of right there. Chamfer length, depth, sharp tool. We'll do a circular lead. That'll be fine. And we'll compute it. As you can see, what we have here is the tool paths for the different operations. I'm going to right click on the pocket, change the color of it to orange. So you can see it roughing it out. Profile finish one will change the color to green. Profile finish here, which I'm going to rename skim pass. I can change its color to like a light blue. You can see it's at the same point as the green. And then the chamfer around the top will make a different color as well. So you can see I can do all of those operations in one feature. Now we need to drill and chamfer the holes. So we're going to go back to machine setup, do a mill drilled hole option. Select the geometry. Since I'm picking off a solid, I want to pick the edge that's at the full diameter, not up at the top of the chamfer. You can pick points and uh, uh, arcs as well. So I have 375 and a 750 hole. We're going to hit next. We're going to do optimized on the order. Here you have your rapid plane feed plane. Rapid plane is your initial value and feed plane is your return value. I need this to be high enough to get over the boss. So I'm going to make these both 1.6 and my top apart is going to be for the first holes is going to be set here. Because the way this works is it's going to do the 375 holes first. The depth of this I'm going to hit pick bottom and pick an edge out here at the bottom of it. So two inches deep. So what this is showing me is the, is the diameter and the depth. We're going to do a hole option, which is center drill, drill, chamfer. Except for the chamfer drill, I'm going to remove and add a chamfer mill to it. Just like we did in the, on the slots there. Work offset one. Now we're on to the tool. So this is the center drill. So you can go to your tool crib, tool library. You can actually slide these names around. I'm going to use a 3 quarter inch 90 degree spot drill. I'm going to assign the drill chuck to this and make sure it hangs out long enough to cut all the way through. 
tool number six. The depth of my spot, I'm going to put it at 100 thousandths. You can also define it, define it by diameter and center angle. We're on to the drill. This is the 375 drill. Make sure the point angle is correct. We can assign the drill chuck to this one and make sure it hangs out enough as well. Speeds and feeds and coolant. The use cutting condition option looks at the cutting conditions for drilling. Turn it off, it's just going to go to the depths. Um, you can see if I turn this off, I can override these as well. I can do a single depth. We're going to actually peck it with retract, and we'll use the auto peck that's there. We're on to the chamfer mill. So for this one here, we're going to use the default tool, just like the last one, which was tool 5. We're going to turn on both compensations again. We're going to give it a depth. We're going to do 31 thousandths and little circular lead in and outs. All right, now we're on to the 750 holes. So here again, you have your rapid plane top apart. Those will be okay because we're all the way up at the top level for this. So my top of job is going to be zero. I am going to use the pick bottom button and pick this level here, and you can see it's three and a half inches deep. We're going to use the hole option again, and again, I'm going to remove the drill and add in the mill. We could have used the apply to all features when we did it the first time and it would have carried it down. Work offset one. We're going to choose the same spot drill and assign the same drill chuck. You have your depth. Again, we'll do point one. Make sure your point angle is correct. We're going to use the drill chuck, and I'm going to make sure it's hanging out long enough. You have your depths. We're going to peck it, and I'm going to make this peck down at eighth inch a peck. Overtyped it there. Just pressed OK. It told me I had too many decimals. Now we're on to the chamfer mill again for this hole. We're going to leave the default tool, turn on both comps again. Give it our depth and do our little circular lead in and out. Compute it. And you can see it drilled all the holes and give me the little chamfers in there. Now all we have left to do on this is the engraving around the top. So to do this one, we're going to go back to the machine setup. We're going to do a, a mill three axis wireframe we're going to use for this one. Even though it's flat, this is a nice operation for this. We're going to select the geometry. I'm going to pick the font. So if I can't grab it through the model, if I hit S for shading, now it hides the shading of the model so I can pick the font. And then right click and OK it. Just the S on the keyboard. Rapid plane top apart. Our top is zero. Now, right now, it's just going to do an engrave right to the depth of the geometry we selected. But I want to be able to step it down, engraving that, maybe 10 thousandths deep in two steps. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the engrave rough over and move it up to the top. And then we'll hit Next, Work Offset 1. The tool for this, I'm going to use a V tool. And in my library, we're just going to use half-inch chamfer to a point. The step distance, I want it to be, let's do uh, three and a half thou two times. We're going to cut down to the geometry or cut from the geometry. So we're going to cut from the geometry down two times. And for the finish, I'm going to go ahead and grab that same one. And we're going to do this one here. That's not it. I grabbed the wrong one. I need to go to the V tool. Pick that one again. There we go. And then we'll compute it. And you can see if I hit shading and zoom in there, you'll see my little toolpath. So our whole part is done. You can see I have our whole tree over here. So we're going to come up to milling job. We're going to right click and we're going to hit post. 
and it'll give you the G code for your machine in the window here, which I'll move up so we can all see. Now, if you need to change the machine control, uh, you can just right click right here and edit the post processor. Or you can, but milling job, current settings, and choose your machine here to change it as well. And then just repost your code. For simulation, we'll simply go to modules and mill simulation. This will take just a second to load up. And you can see as it loads up here, I have the tool path, the tool, and the stock. I like to turn off the initial stock and the tool path, and I'm going to hide the workpiece. So I just have my stock and my tool. I have some speed here. This will fit our screen. And then we'll just hit play. And you see it's just going to run around there and show me how it's going to cut when it goes out to the machine. So you can see it's doing the roughing step down here. And what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and stop it. And I'm going to drag the slide bar across to the next operation. It'll fast forward to that point. And then we'll hit play. And you can see it's finishing the flatlands. And then it's going to do the uh, 3D down the dome. And there you can see the final result. So we get our engraving on the top, our slots with our chamfers, our holes with our chamfers, and our 3D and everything. Looks pretty good. Again, when you want to post your code, go to the milling job, right click, choose post, just make sure you have the right machine and post processor chosen. This concludes this lesson.